Hello! Welcome to the second part of the introductory lesson. Remember in Adobe InDesign, we don't do file open unless it's a template. We do file place. So that works for your photos. You'll notice that ooh, the toolbox is not showing, so I will say, oh, it is showing. Where is it? <laughs> there they are. Okay. You will notice that the toolbox is similar to so the other Adobe programs you've been working with, Photoshop and, Indes and Illustrator. You have a direct selection tool and a selection tool, um, a text tool, lines, some boxes. Um, those are mostly the tools you'll be l using on this beginning session, but you're welcome to explore any of them at any time. So to put in your picture that you have already photoshopped and sized correctly, so that's important to size it correctly. You can see that this picture, if I take the ruler guides and put it over the picture, that it is about nine and a half, nine and three fourths inches wide by six inches deep. You will literally need to go to Photoshop and make yours to fit exactly, crop it exactly. So whatever your width is that you're using times whatever the height is that you want with 300 pixels per inch. Now if your art only goes across three columns it might look like this um, or you know a little bit up. You can make it bigger as well with these handles. With every photo that you put in or piece of art you will need something called a cut line and I've put in this template a sample cut line that has the style already be built in. You just highlight it and you type in the who, what, where, why. That is what a cut line is. Another name for it is a caption. You should have no art that doesn't have a cut line. So every piece of art should have a cut line. You have a probably already flowed your text. Make sure you're, you have a title for your Lunch with Artist and you have a byline. So byline is by and then your name and then your title. Uh, your biography might have a bigger headline with a display font. And right now you are just kind of playing with the space to make a good design, remembering about visual hierarchy. You can have a cutout. Let me make this smaller to show. Perhaps you took a piece of your art and cut it out because you're designing with shapes. Put this over here. Hey, cut back. So perhaps you have a cutout because you want your design to look a little different than all boxes. Sometimes things can disappear that way. Um, and then you just rearrange the puzzle pieces. Maybe you would put the headline here. Maybe you would put your cut line here. You want to think about how it's aligned. It has enough space between the cut line and the art. Um, maybe you want your text to be here. And then this one would be as you're moving everything along, you want to get your subhead, your name. So the idea is that you can move these puzzle pieces anywhere you want. You will have different pieces, each of you, um, and you want to not have any kept, um, white space that's stuck. Trap white space. And you'll notice that this moves to the next line. If you indeed would like to move this here, you can even do that. Some of the things you want to remember is to fill your space as much as possible. Have your cut lines and your bylines. So right now, it's your job to put your puzzle pieces in order. Um, I'm, you can use a couple pieces of art. One, of course, is the dominant piece. And your biography and your lunch with artists will flow to the next page. You have not yet put in your timeline, nor have you designed your ads. So have fun with the puzzle. 